Welcome back to the workshop. Today we're going to be checking out power supply positioning. We've heard a bunch of stuff over the years uh, with case feet do this, without case feet do that, with the basement do this. Turn the fan so that it's facing up into the case because it can help cool your graphics card and all this other mumbo jumbo. So let's try it out. We're going to do a bunch of different scenarios. We have a case that has a basement in it and we're going to have the fan going up and down. The clear winner here is probably obvious, but anyways. Uh, without a basement we will do the power supply fan up and down and with a reference uh, rear exhaust cool graphics card and with an internal exhaust graphics card. We're also going to take system temperatures and GPU temperatures and power supply temperatures and ambient temperatures and thermometers everywhere. Let's get started. G-Fuel is the sugar-free alternative energy beverage to maintain focus and endurance in long days and gaming sessions. Save some money with our offer code at the link below. So our first test has the power supply in the bottom facing down, so the fan is pulling up from under the case and exhausting out the back. This should not contribute to the system's temperature at all, but I want it for uh, like initial test anyways. For the rest of the system I have a 390X, not overclocked, but running the Crisis 3 Skybox test, which will be putting stress on it and the CPU, which is running on top of a Hyper 212 Evo. The CPU here is a 4790K, which is overclocked at 1.3 five volts so it should be generating some heat as well and with an air cooler instead of a water cooler it should actually be dumping heat into the rest of the system too so this is a pretty hot air environment so now that we're good to go we're gonna wait 10 minutes so everything can heat up okay so the first test is done our ambient outside the case right now looks like it's about 25.4 I'm gonna take this off of the front which is our thermal probe and then hopefully I can read an ambient temperature inside of the case looks like it's about 41 and a half so that's actually quite hot inside of the case so just checking the numbers now it looks like the power supply is running at 32.5 degrees Celsius at an RPM of about 530 give or take a little bit the graphics card was running at about 87 degrees Celsius and the CPU was running at about 74 degrees 72 degrees Celsius now we're going to try it with the power supply fan pointing up into the case but remember there is that basement panel there so i don't really expect this is going to go too well but we'll check out the numbers in 10 minutes okay so the second test is done the outside temperature is at 25.5 degrees okay and then the temperature inside the case is looking like again it's right at about 41.5 we're getting the same temperature, which is pretty much what I expected because the thermal zone in the bottom where the power supply is, is isolated. So turning it around shouldn't actually change anything. We're just making sure that it doesn't. Okay, so checking out the power supply first, it looks like it's about 40 degrees Celsius and we're running a fan RPM of 640, which is considerably higher than the 530 from before. Our GPU temperature during the test was sitting at right about 89 degrees consistently throughout the entire thing. And then the CPU was running at about 67 degrees. So really the GPU and CPU had no change overall. So we have now moved the system to the Define R5. I took the Modu vents off the top so that it can breathe up there a little bit. The fans are all plugged in. And we are now taking the ambient temperature of the room from the side of the case because we like taking that right where the case is intaking air. So we're taking it from the side because the front is a solid block. The first test that we're gonna be doing in here is the power supply pulling air in from the bottom and exhausting it out of the back with an internal exhaust GPU. So a pretty standard setup. The temperature going into the case in terms of room ambience is at about 25.7 degrees. And then the temperature inside the system in terms of ambience is about 42 degrees, which is actually pretty damn hot. Now we move on to the software stuff. We get to see that our power supply is running at about 584 RPM at a temperature of 35 degrees Celsius. Our CPU is running at about what looks like 67 degrees, which is on par with what it was doing before. And our GPU temperature is actually pretty hot at 94 degrees throughout the main testing area. 
So now things get interesting. We're in the same case, same graphics card setup, internal exhaust, same tests, all that kind of stuff. But now the power supply has its fan pointed upwards. Some people say that this can help your GPU's thermals or your system thermals as it pulls air out and then out the back of the power supply and the power supply's temperatures will be fine anyway. So we'll see if it actually does that. Dun, dun, dun. Okay, so for that test, the room temperature was at about 25.8 degrees. The system temperature we will grab right now. Yep, that's 42 degrees, so basically no difference at all. So the CPU is more or less at about 67 degrees. There is quite a bit of spikiness here. Also, the GPU is still at 94 degrees Celsius. Now scrolling down to look at the core clock to see any differences there, it is also about the same. It's at about 10. 40 in terms of core clock. So it's not running at 94 degrees, but a little bit faster, or a little bit slower. It's just, it's doing the same thing. But the power supply was a bit hotter. So time to investigate more. All right, we have now removed our internal exhaust Strix 390X. So I put in a 290, which should kinda, you know, take a little bit more power and probably cause a little bit more thermal destruction to the inside of the case. So now, 10 more minutes and we'll see how a rear exhaust card and a fan pointing upwards from the power supply manages to cool the whole system. The temperature in the room right now is about 26 degrees. Looks like our overall system temperature is way lower. Sitting at about 29 degrees. The power supply is running at 36.5 degrees with a fan RPM of 536. So the power supply is not even pushing that hard. The GPU before I opened Snagit was running at about 94 degrees Celsius with a clock speed of around mid 600s to mid 700s. And then our CPU is sitting at about 62 degrees Celsius. Okay, so the last test is running right now. The Skybox test is on the screen. The rear exhaust card is installed and the fan on the graphics card is oriented pointing downwards. So we'll see you in 10 minutes. Okay, so the temperature in the room is a solid 25.8 degrees. Okay, and then the temperature in the system is at about 29, 28.9, 29.1 degrees, which is more or less what it was before. So the internal temperature is the same. Power supply numbers, just a second. Okay, so it's running at 41 degrees Celsius, but the fan isn't even spinning. So it's not really trying that hard. The graphics card is running a core clock of, so it's 700 and something to 600 and something. And the temperature is about 94 degrees. So there's no real difference there. And the CPU is running at about, yeah, 62. Just before people ask for additional information, the fan speed on both the graphics cards were both pinned at 45%, so those should not have been changing. And the fans throughout the system on both cases were pinned, but I did use different fans. Again, the system temperature and whatnot between the two shouldn't even really be compared. They're different cases using different fans, whatever. Just isolate those tests. So the information here is interesting and there's actually a few different results that you can come to depending on what scenario and what case type that you have. So I'm hoping that these results are interesting to you. Some of them are fairly obvious. Like if you have a basement in your case, don't point the fan towards the like roof of the basement where it can't breathe at all. Yeah, the ones where it's like an internal exhaust graphics card, it didn't really seem to help the graphics card, which is what I was kind of hoping for, and it did increase the heat of the power supply. One interesting thing that we did notice was with rear exhaust graphics cards. If the power supply had its fan turned up into the case, it actually did perform better in terms of the power supply's temperature, nothing else. Not the system, not the graphics card, not the CPU, nothing but the power supplies. I'm assuming that's because there's air coming in through the front of the case that's fresh and nice and cold and is being pushed over top of the power supply and then out the back so it's able to breathe fresh, nice, cold air. But what we did learn today is that it's not not that big of a deal, which is a very unfortunate and consistent conclusion of the workshop. But 
There is different results per test, and it's mainly based around the temperature of the power supply. So while we're still definitely within uh, what's safe for a power supply to run at, you might be able to change your orientation or do something slightly different in order to fine tune things because a zero overall impact in terms of your graphics card's performance and temperatures and whatever, and saving a fairly noticeable amount of degrees on your power supply might not be a bad idea in terms of overall longevity. If you guys want to test it out and try it with your own graphics cards and your own systems with different setups and all that kind of stuff, do it. Check it out on the forum, post that in the forum thread for this video, that will be super interesting. Are you coding for easy online payments? If you're building a mobile app and searching for a simple payment solution, check out Braintree. With the Braintree V.0 SDK, which is one small snippet of code, you can be all set up in less than 10 minutes, and they even have support staff ready to walk you through the process over the phone if you need them. Their code supports Android, iOS, and JavaScript clients, and they have SDKs in seven different programming languages. They make it easy to offer multiple mobile payment types, including PayPal, Apple Pay, Bitcoin, Venmo, cards, and more, all with a simple integration. To learn more and for your first $50,000 in transactions fee-free, go to braintreepayments.com slash Linus. If you like this video, like it. If you dislike this video, dislike it. If you thought it was pretty cool and you want to see more, get subscribed. Use our Amazon affiliate code to buy stuff because that helps us out a lot. Buy a t-shirt that isn't this one or go on the forum while you're posting the information about the test you did and become a contributor as well. If you want to see another cool video, check out this one. It's about like applying thermal paste and like which different method is better than whatever other one or if that's even a thing or not.